Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of a problem that a client came across. And this is not a problem that you often see, but it will happen on occasion. The problem was it started when they bought their first new computer. Uh, they wanted them to transfer all the files, videos, music, everything they needed on the old computer onto the new computer. Well, everything was going fine up to a point until a problem occurred. Well, it didn't make sense to them. So they contacted me and asked me if I'd take a look at it and help them resolve the problem. The example here is I'm going to show you what was going on and how you're going to be able to fix this. If you look here, uh, you can see that I have demo drive plugged in. This is the drive I want to work with. Now, as you can see, it's got plenty of space on it. This blue represents how much data is being occupied on the drive. The white indicates the free space that I can still add. Well, here it shows 6.31 gigabytes are free of 7.38 gigabytes. So, as you can see, there's plenty of room of what I'm going to do. But if I open up, you'll see that there, this is a file that's currently on it. Just one file. But if I'm going to add a file to it, you get this message. That the file is too large for the destination file system. Well, that's odd, isn't it? I mean, we just saw that it had plenty of over 6 gigabytes of space that you could use. And 4.8 is less than 6. So you see where the, pro the confusion was at. Well, it's not the computer. It's not the drive that's causing the problem. This right here, where it says destination file system, that's a key. If we were to look up the properties of the drive, you'll see the use space and the free space and the total capacity of the drive. But the file system, as you can see here, is FAT32. And let me show you how this is a problem. All data storage media use a variation of a filing system. Its function is like the catalog that you would find in a local library. The catalog helps to find information about the book and into where you could find that book using location numbers. The phone book, it's another good example. You can look up a person by name or a company by type of business to find their phone number and address. The table of contents or the index in a book is another good example. You can find specific topics in the book. Now, there are many different types of filing systems. And many USB flash memory use a filing system called the FAT32. Now, this is short for a file allocation table with 32-bit addressing. Microsoft introduced the FAT32 in August 1996 with Windows 95 OEM service release number 2. This was to overcome the FAT16's limitations. The first version of FAT32 used cylinder head sector addressing known as Type 0B. The problem with this was that it could only work with partitions up to 8 gigabytes. Well, as drive capacities increased, type 0C was developed to use logical block addressing. Now, this scheme theoretically increases the partition's capacity up to 16 terabytes. Now, by default, Windows will only format a drive up to 32 gigabytes. However, you can use the command prompt or PowerShell for larger volume sizes. To store data, FAT32 uses 32 bytes of hexadecimal data for each file entry. Now here's a good example of a FAT32 file entry. The first 11 bytes contains the file's name and its type or extension, known as the 8.3 names, or in some cases, short file names, where the first 8 bytes is a file name and the last 3 bytes is the extension. The 12th byte stores the file's basic attributes, such as read-only, archive, system, and hidden. The 13th byte is reserved and not used. 
bytes 14 through 18 store the dates and time that the file was created. Bytes 19 and 20 stores the date that the file was last accessed or opened. Bytes 21, 22, 27, and 28 store the first cluster of the file's start location. Bytes 23 to 26 stores the date and time that the file was last modified or changed. And finally, bytes 29 through 32 stores the file size on a disk. Let's focus on these four bytes. A bit is either a 1 or a 0. One byte contains 8 bits, creating a maximum decimal number of 255. Two bytes contains 16 bits. Therefore, the maximum decimal number is 65,535. With four bytes contains 32 bits. This would bring the maximum decimal to 4,294,967,000 295. Are you starting to see the problem? There are only four bytes of data that can be stored there. And we know that the highest number that can be stored in four bytes is 4,294,967,295. There lies the problem. It's not a problem with your PC or the USB drive. The problem is the FAT32 format. So, how do you solve the problem? Well, at the time, the file, file size was not a big concern. Most files at the time were less than a gigabyte in size, if that. But however, as technology advanced and applications became more complex, so did the file size. Now, to solve the problem, Microsoft created the new technology file system. It's based on the original high-performance file system that was developed by Microsoft and IBM. It was created to improve data storage with, boot, with many new features, such as journaling, uh, they got um, alternate data streams, uh, file compression, volume shadow copying, and uh, a bunch of new security features, and so forth. Now, NTFS also supports large file sizes over four gigabytes because it uses eight bytes or 64 bits to store the file's size on the disk. Theoretically, the file's size can be up to 16 hexabytes. So, why is FAT32 still used on USB flash memory if NTFS can store files larger than four gigabytes? One reason is because NTFS uses more processing to protect the data that's on the drive. For instance, journaling is a process that tracks all the upcoming changes to the drive's data. In the event of a crash or power outage, the system can recover using the log file containing pending changes. This process is not good for flash memory since they have a limited number of writes before they begin to break down. Flash memory would wear faster from all the extra writing to the cells. Another reason is that not all PCs use NTFS, which can cause compatibility issues. For example, Apple uses the Apple file system, known as APFS, both NTFS and APFS are similar in functions, but have completely different structures. Now, most operating systems do recognize FAT32 drives. Tablets, smartphones, smart TVs all recognize FAT32 drives. FAT32 allows compatibility between devices because there's no security descriptors, there's no journaling, none of that overhead just a basic file system. The only drawback with FAT32 is that the file cannot be larger than four gigabytes. Now, if you need to transfer large files like videos and movies, 
then it would be best to use an external hard drive using NTFS or APFS. But what if you are transferring large files between your Windows computer and your Mac computer? That is where you're going to run into some problems. For instance, Mac computers can only read from an NTFS drive. It cannot write to the NTFS drive. As far as Windows, well, you can't even read or write to these APFS drives for Macs without using some kind of a third-party software. And even those have limitations. I mean, you can use file network sharing, which, you know, that can uh, be fast and convenient. However, this requires knowledge to set up file sharing over the network between the computers and even troubleshooting when a problem arises. So to resolve the FAT32 limitations, Microsoft introduced the extensible FAT format in 2006. Now, it is compatible with both Windows and Mac operating systems, plus Android and iOS devices. Extensible FAT does not have the file size restriction, nor does it have the file system overhead that you see in NTFS and APFS. It also supports the long file names, file sizes up to 16 hexabytes, and drive capacities up to 128 petabytes. Now, many flash storage medias like Secure Digital's Extreme Capacity flash memory cards use extensible FAT to achieve their high data transfer rate. You will also find that many memory cards with capacities over 32 gigabytes use extensible FAT. So to resolve the issue with the FAT32 limitations and compatibility issues between different operating systems, what you'll do is on Windows, we're going to format the drive. Um, as you can see here, make sure that your drive is plugged into your computer and that Windows does detect it as you see here. Uh, you want to open up your file explorer, uh, which you'll see this by going to this PC. I'm going to select this drive and you want to make sure that you do select the correct drive. Do not format the wrong drive. I'm going to right click on the drive and then I'm going to choose format. You're going to see the menu here. It's going to show the capacity, the filing system, as you can see here, FAT32 by default, the allocation unit size, which you don't have to worry about, and you can also name the label. What I want to do is I'm going to change this, and as you can see, it gives you three options. I'm going to use extensible FAT. And as you can see, it already has the default allocation size. Well, if you're not sure which one to use, just go over here and select default allocation size. This way, the computer will determine the best allocation size for that particular drive. Next, all you need to do now is name the drive that you're going to do. And down here, you're going to see the format options. Now, this is important. If you do quick format, um, it does speed up the process in the format process. However, um, this is done by formatting the drive on the fly. And it can slow down performance because your computer is having to format the drive as it writes data. So it can th slow down the format or the performance. If you turn it off, it takes a little longer to do the format but in the long run, you had the best performance because your computer doesn't have to go through format the drive as it writes data. Once you've selected your options, click start. You are going to get a warning. Uh, you want to make sure there's nothing on the drive that you want to keep before you uh, format it because formatting will delete all the data from the drive. Click OK and it's going to begin the format. Now once the formatting is complete, you'll get the message that pops up, just click OK, and you're good. Now we can go ahead and put my file on here, and as you can see, now it's going to allow it to be saved. You can also check in the properties, and you'll notice now that it says EXFAT. So, that is how you could do it on a Windows. If you're on a Mac computer,
Uh, what you can do is be sure that you plug the drive into the computer and the Mac does detect it. Open up Disk Utility. Uh, you can find this in Launchpad or you can search for it in Spotlight. Once you have Disk Utility opened, uh, it's going to li list all the drives on the left hand tab or the sidebar. And what you want to do is select the drive that you want. And be sure that you do select the correct drive because you do not want to format the wrong drive. Because when you format a drive, it will delete its contents. Once you have that drive selected, as you see here, go to the top and if none of the box is going to pop up. It's going to give you three options. It's going to say name, which is the volume of the name of the drive that you're going to uh, create. It could be any name you want. Format, what you'll do is click on it and it's going to have a drop down list. You want to select EXFAT. That's the extensible FAT. For scheme, do not worry about that. Just leave it where it's at and then click Erase. It's going to show you the progress of the erasure and reformatting of the drive. Once it's finished, it will give you a confirmation of the completion of this and then you click Done. Once you've completed done, now you're able to use the newly formatted drive on practically any operating system, whether it's Windows, a Mac, Linux, you'll be able to use it for that and have no compatibility problems. Well, this concludes this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, if you did like this video to help support new videos, please go ahead and click that like button at the bottom of the video and please subscribe and click the notification bell icon to receive all notifications of upcoming videos. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.